Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, as I promised, I'm going to talk about the truncation error associated to convergent alternating series. And uh, what I said uh, in the example zero uh, where we discussed the alternating series test is that the truncation error is uh, basically, in a nutshell, uh, what um, allows us to say how good an approximation we get to the value to which a convergent alternating series converges if we use the nth partial sum. Um, so uh, the rest of this video really does not require me talking, uh, but yeah, I guess I'll talk you through some parts and explain a little bit. Uh, so first, read this, right? So uh, in other words, we're saying that like if we truncate the series, which is use the nth partial sum, then um, we can say how good that nth partial sum is as an approximation of s, where s is the value to which the convergent alternating series converges. Yeah? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, now, um, that is, we can calculate the distance between Sn and S, an absolute value, and that's this here, right? Okay, the following visual is going to go a long way in helping you understand this video. Um, so, suppose that we have S, uh, the value to which the alternating uh, series converges, is this, right? This number here. And let's say Sn is this, right? The nth partial sum. Uh, then we know uh, from the video um, example zero on the alternating series test that Sn plus one will have to be on this other side and closer to S, right? Okay, so let's say Sn plus one is here and Sn is here, right? Then clearly the distance between um, Sn and S is this, right? Um, and we have an absolute value because like, uh, it's a distance one and two. We don't know ahead of time that Sn is above S. It could be below S. Where if that were the case, which is if Sn was below S, then Sn plus one would be on the other side. But you get it, you get it, you get it. Now look here. The distance between Sn and S is less than the distance between Sn and Sn plus one. Yeah, that's very important in note here. And that's really what you need to take away from this visual. Yeah? Uh, so let's say more about what I just said. First, what we mean by the truncation error is this distance between Sn and S, an absolute value. That's what the truncation error is. And it's what tells us how good uh, an approximation Sn is to S. Yeah? Okay. But as I just said, notice that the distance between Sn and S is less than the distance between uh, Sn plus 1 and Sn. Right? Okay. This versus this. This is clearly smaller. Right? Okay. But wait. Uh, the difference between Sn plus 1 and Sn has to be the following, which is An plus 1, right? So then we can say this. Therefore, the distance between uh, Sn and S, which is less than the distance between Sn plus 1 and Sn, has to be, this here, has to be less than the absolute value of An plus 1, right? Okay. Um, and therefore, here's an example. We know that the alternating harmonic, the famous alternating harmonic, at least in math circles, converges to the natural log of 2. And I have a video showing why the alternating harmonic converges to the natural log of 2, and I'll link that video below this. And the natural log of 2 is approximately 0 0.69. Now, if we use the first eight terms of the alternating harmonic to approximate the natural log of 2, then the error and using the first eight terms to approximate the natural log of two would have to be less than the absolute value of negative one over nine, where negative one over nine is a n plus one. And an absolute value, clearly, that's one over nine. So we're saying uh, that using eight terms of the alternating harmonic series uh, does as good a job as being less than one over nine away from the natural log of two. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, I don't think I could explain this more, so um, I'll leave it here, but there'll be four examples on the alternating series test using it and the truncation error, so you'll hear more about the truncation error in those examples. All right, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and keep watching. Take care.